What's up guys, Handish here, and today we're jumping back in with Bungie's first update of 2020, and of course it's the return of this week at Bungie after the holiday period. So first up we should say that this isn't a massive update in terms of news and content and things like that, but Bungie do talk about Destiny 2's next hotfix, we get a preview of just a couple of the issues that they're going to fix there, otherwise they talk about the content roadmap, the conclusion of the dawning event, some updates to Bungie's anti-cheat policies and the policies around bans some charitable efforts and things to round up in the video. So guys, we'll get into this quick update if you do enjoy it. A rating below really helps me out, but otherwise let's get into it. First up, Bungie say you have through next Tuesday to complete as many double XP bounties as you can. Additionally, the Sundial has been kicked up a notch with a legend difficulty. And if you're looking to get the savior title or a roundup of your pinnacle power drops each week, get your fire team together and challenge these scions in the ways of old. Of course, that's in reference to the roadmap content that we've got this week. They mentioned Devil's Ruin and a new trailer for that, which will run at the end of the video. But they do say we're still warming up from our holiday hibernation, but we're hitting the ground running. This week, we have an update from our game security team, an announcement for a fundraiser to help send aid to Australia, and news on a hotfix coming early next week. Outside of other content news though, they do say, prepare for things to ramp up here over the next few weeks. Season of Dawn still has more in store, with an upcoming exotic, Empyrean Foundation, Crimson Days, and more. And of course Bastion is the next exotic quest that we get, that's on the 28th of January, and then we get Empyrean Foundation the week after. Both of those should be pretty interesting pieces of content, but of course it looks like we might have a couple of quiet weeks between now and then. First up for next week's hotfix and a couple of other issues, they do point out that the Worm God Caress has been disabled, so we spoke about that problem where the Burning Fist perk could retain increased melee damage after its intended timer countdown, allowing players to easily defeat raid bosses, and the armor 1.0 and 2.0 versions of these gauntlets have been disabled until a fix can be deployed at a later date. There are a few pretty overpowered bugs and glitches in the game with various exotics and mods and stuff like that at the moment. There have also been some frustrating issues inside of the game, such as the European Dead Zone Obelisk problem and Eververse Waypoint notifications. So Bungie do say that next Tuesday on January 14th, they'll release Hotfix 2.7.02, which apparently is going to fix a few known issues. So outside of the Obelisk and the Eververse notification, it looks like we will get a couple of additional fixes. And so at 8am PST, Destiny 2 maintenance is going to begin. There'll be a little bit of downtime immediately before reset, but at 9am Pacific, so at the normal reset time, players will be able to log in and the hotfix will begin rolling out across all platforms. So be sure to bear that in mind. On top of this, they've updated their known issues list for the new year. So the Leviathan's Breath Exotic Bow currently cannot be acquired due to an issue with the Arms Dealer Strike where it can only be completed in Season 8. That's definitely frustrating. On top of this, the Tower Obelisk sometimes cannot be accessed, and players encountering this issue should return to orbit and launch back to the Tower. Kind of frustrating that that one's still a thing, although it isn't as much of an issue as the EDZ one, typically. But also, the Giddy Laugh emote keeps loading in the emote collection, but can't actually be unequipped if slotted. So they are looking at those issues as well as a few others, which you'll find linked in this week at Bungie. But they also say, as the holiday season comes to an end, so does the dawning, so that will conclude on January 14th, on next week's weekly reset. So if you want to complete bounties, earn that double XP and everything else, of course farming for god rolls is another one. And once again, that will go away on Tuesday. There is a section in This Week at Bungie about game security, and they say that the security team have been improving Destiny's anti-cheat functionality, which detects players violating any of Bungie's restrictions and ban policies. And the anti-cheat improvements will result in more players receiving restrictions and bans. They do say, though, that going forward, they'll be providing a resource for players to appeal a restriction or ban, and more details will be available on the appeal contact form, which will be posted soon. Of course, Bungie don't tend to give us a ton of details when it comes to game security, anti-cheat, and everything like that, but they're continuing to roll out improvements that ultimately will result in more people being banned. And to mitigate against issues where maybe players are wrongfully banned, or something like that, they will be rolling out this appeal process. So hopefully not something that will be relevant to you, but you can pair it in mind if it is. The final section in this week at Bungie, though, is more of a charitable effort, and they posted about helping Australia via the Bungie Foundation. So 
They say the bushfires currently ravaging Australia have been devastating. Many people have lost their homes, and firefighters are risking their lives daily, and an estimated hundreds of millions of wild animals have fallen victim to the fires. And of course, this is something that's been ongoing for some time, and something that we're actually seeing happening more often. And so Punji do say that they're developing a limited edition t-shirt fundraising campaign to support both Australia's firefighting efforts and the country's animal rescue and conservation efforts. So the t-shirt, which comes with an exclusive Destiny 2 Starlight, Star Bright emblem code with every purchase, will be available for pre-order on the Bungie store and the EU store between Thursday, January 16th and Tuesday, February 18th at 9am Pacific. So that's going to end on the weekly reset at the end of Crimson Days. They do say the team is currently hard at work on the t-shirt design and they'll share a preview early next week. But the first half of all of the profits generated by the t-shirt will be donated to WIRES, and that's Australia's largest wildlife rescue organisation. And then the other half will be donated to the NSW Rural Fire Service, which services the state of New South Wales where the fires have been especially devastating. So it's pretty cool that the Bungie Foundation are continuing with efforts like this, and of course this is a fairly reactionary one. You can see a preview of the emblem that you get with the t-shirt right there, so definitely bear it in mind, next Thursday, January 16th is when that's going to become available. Obviously, Bungie will be keeping us posted in the future this week at Bungie Updates, and you can keep your eye on the store and everything like that. I'm definitely looking forward to picking up one of those. Now though, let's round up a few additional bits, and first we have some pretty cool interview segments from Francesco Rizzi, who's actually the voice actor for Saint-14 in the game. I believe I said that name correctly, but nonetheless there are some interesting insights into the role, very much from the perspective of the actor, but nonetheless I thought it was cool to cover, so I'll link the interview from TGCom24 down below. And initially they ask, returning to Destiny, that of Saint-14 is one of the most iconic warriors in the universe created by Bungie, how did you prepare for his role? He says, as always happens in the dubbing phase, for anything, you do not arrive in the studio and receive a script to study. Everything you do, apart from a few indications on the character, you do it there at the moment and you never really get ready. This is also a bit of the magic of dubbing, that is that you're going to glue a type of acting that is more physical, that has been more prepared, to yours that is much more instinctive and immediate. He goes on to say it's a very electric thing, because the moment you understand what you have in front of you, you transform yourself, and you have the opportunity to play every day without knowing what you will do. And so that's kind of an interesting insight in itself, isn't it? Because he's saying as a voice actor, you don't necessarily really get a super rounded out version of that character that you get to develop over time. Because of how you can edit audio and record multiple different versions of things, it's much more effective from a production point of view to kind of get straight in, find the character pretty early on, and then create a whole bunch of different versions of dialogue that the producers can then actually pull from to create the finished product. They also say the journey of Saint-14 is influenced by the actions of the player, who jumping between past and future creates a perfect paradox that transforms your character from a young and lost titan to a real living legend, which would later inspire with his actions thousands of other characters. What do you think of Saint's evolution in history? And really, as an extension of the first statement, he says, while you're voicing, you don't have the whole story ahead. You have the sentences at the beginning, another sentence maybe three hours later in the plot. And he says that he certainly finds it really fascinating given his love for science fiction, time travel, and things like that. But Saint-14, when he speaks, is always very cryptic, as if he were hiding a weight, something that he carries behind but isn't necessarily ready to share with others. And this is a little of his strength as well as his charm. And so yeah, just thought those were some pretty interesting insights. And of course, from the perspective of how they actually produce and record the characters, they certainly have to be pretty efficient about it. And so if you want to check that full interview out by TGCom24, I will link it down below. But up next, there has been some conversation about Google Stadia and how successful the platform is, as well, of course, as Destiny. And so Forbes originally posted this, but according to Charlemagne Bot, the player base for D2 has halved on Stadia, specifically since the launch. So we can see on November 26, D2 had 494,000 players on PC, 454,000 on PS4, 331,000 on Xbox, and then 19,500 on Stadia. But jumping ahead to the end of December, we can see we've got 437,000 on PC. And so there is a bit of a drop there from a month prior. Then it's a somewhat similar situation on PS4 with 435,000, Xbox with 313,000, but then Stadia having just 8,000 players, which is actually less than half of what they had the month before. So of course it is a pretty interesting one, but Stadia as a shipping gaming platform is definitely a pretty experimental one 
Of course, there are the requirements for the kind of network that you need to really enjoy something like Stadia. And I think while the technology definitely has a lot of potential for the future, it's definitely in the very early stages. And also, in terms of Destiny players actually dropping off, it's worth bearing in mind that Destiny was kind of a founder's title for Stadia. So a lot of people would have bought the platform, signed into Destiny for the first time. And then, of course, they may be going off to play other games that they actually bought the platform for or whatever. So... While Destiny's player base definitely shrunk a little bit over that period of time in general, the hit that it sees on the Stadia platform definitely is primarily because of the Stadia platform, right? So I'd be curious to hear what you guys have experienced with Stadia if you have played it, or any general thoughts you have on kind of game streaming services. But if you want to check the article from Forbes out down below, then I will link it in the description. The very final thing to run right here is a new trailer from Bungie for the Devil's Ruin quest. And I do realize that I called the weapon the Devil's Dawn, in my news video yesterday, which of course was a weapon from back in D1. Man, it makes me feel like an old man of destiny, but... Nonetheless, if you want to check out the full trailer for Devil's Ruin, then I will run it now, but... If you're new to the channel and you have enjoyed the video and you like D2 news, guides and other content, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so I can keep you up to date with everything related to the game. Also, give us any thoughts in the comment section that you have on the TWAB and the stuff that we covered in the video. But if you've enjoyed this one, a rating really helps me out below. And guys, for now, whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day. Look at this place. I cannot believe what this city has become. Together, we will fight.